But this is the heart of it. This yeah. is, I mean, today the spiritual freedom show mm. is calling for spiritual freedom for the Mother Earth. Right. Yeah. That's the freedom that's required yeah. here. Yeah. She's limited by us. And we are really calling out to ourselves and everybody else to engage in changing, to bring about the spiritual freedom of the Mother Earth. The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. All right, Richard, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Now, I've got something very special, I think, to share. I'm thanking you for thanking me for coming back onto my show, <laughs> yeah. which, which I do. It's the world we live in, people. I happily do with you, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so something very special, I think, to share today. Um, I'll just start by sharing a little bit of this comment that, someone, that, that I found from someone here. Who's, who, who asked the question, who has made a connection with our Mother Earth in a calm place with that technology? I tried to connect with her suffering and it made me cry. I think it's one of the most important things as a human that we can do in this life. And I think there's a very interesting thread to pull on there because mm. you know, not only do we um, revere the Mother Earth as a living goddess, of mm -hmm. course, but today is a day that we celebrate every year uh, in honor of a very special event, in fact, the most important event in our history. Mm. Um, and I thought we could start by maybe talking a little bit about, you know, the Mother Earth as a living being, because mm. that's, you know, it's, it's a concept that's been kind of proposed to some extent and, mm -hmm. and even been uh, recognized in history. But today, on the whole, it's not really something that we think about. No, and we know far more about it now than we ever did. Mm. And that's um, not specifically um, coming from the Nine Freedoms. Um, it, it, the Nine Freedoms helps us to understand everything. Sure. Uh, but it's certainly coming from the knowledge of Dr. George King and the knowledge he received from Mars Sector 6, who gave the Nine Freedoms right. in other transmissions right. and other revelations. And the life, as it were, of the, of the Mother Earth, it's a tragic life. Mm. Um, we have the seventh blessing, of course, which is something very good for people to really focus on today mm -hmm. uh, in the 12 blessings. Yeah. Uh, blessed is the Mother Earth. And, never, and, and, and we, we should really, um, never should a really a day pass that we don't think about and bless and thank the Mother Earth because we wouldn't have experience without her. The experience cycle that we are allowed mm. on Earth by the Mother Earth is very different. That we can learn from the Nine Freedoms, from the experience cycle on other planets. Right. It's much more limited, much more limiting. It goes back to us accepting free will rather than freedom, and now we need our free will to find freedom. Yeah. That's just the way yeah. it goes. Yeah. Um, and so we have things like reincarnation for most people and not for the ascended masters. Mm. But that of itself isn't the natural order of things. Right. The natural order of things, and this will happen in the new age on earth, is for people to be, as it were, incarnated, procreated, whatever word you want to use, through the flame of the planet upon which they dwell. We're just not advanced enough to do that. Mm. And this is a gross, I mean, the whole structure of the realms of Earth, are, even the highest realms of Earth, are low by her standards, standards yeah. and, and, and what she should be able to express. Mm. Never mind the lower ones, mm. which are an abhorrence. I mean, this level we're on here is extremely basic, warlike. And we're only allowed to do this because she permits us to, for our sake, to gain experience. She doesn't need, she right. doesn't, she, the right. Mother Earth, doesn't need us. Right. She could cast us into, a drift could have done that hundreds of thousands of years ago in Atlantis or after Atlantis. Or she, she doesn't need this burden, but she accepts it for our sake. So really, we owe everything to her, um, her sacrifice. There's no sort of dressing this up in, nice, in a nice way. Yeah. This is why, actually, anyone who's not engaged in especially spiritual service, but let's just say service, mm. is a criminal. I mean, there's no other word for it because, um, you know, it's a crime against the Mother Earth. Yeah. Because that's the very, very least we owe her. But I'll, I'll give you a positive thing. Yeah. What better reason could there be for us to want to advance ourselves than to do it for her? 
Yeah, that is a positive way to look at it. There's a really positive and thought to take have. away. I mean, one that we all have. That's a great <coughs> takeaway for all of us, because in the past, you know, people have wanted to advance themselves because they wanted to for their own sake. Yeah. Some people will want to advance themselves so they can serve humanity more. Sure. That's a great thing. That's yeah. a great reason. Sure. But it's not as great as advancing ourselves so that the vibrations around the Earth are risen so that it's far more conducive for her to release the energies which are hers, but which she's holding back. Because she, you, you mentioned that she was initiated. I mm -hmm. think you mentioned that, and we're celebrating that today, 59 yeah. years ago. But as of yet, she's only released a fraction of those energies that she was initiated into. They're, they're virtually held in storage because of us. And this is an absolute travesty. It's a total and utter disgrace. It's too advanced a disgrace for most people to even get indignant sure, about sure. or even believe in. Right, but right, that doesn't right. alter the truth. I mean, the truth just is. And this is probably the most important truth any human being could, could grapple with, deal with. You know, even the ecologists and the people campaigning for yeah. the environment mm -hmm. aren't doing it mainly for her. Right. They're doing it for humanity. So the highest motive anyone on Earth could have, I think, is service to the Mother Earth. If we can do it, and there's not mm -hmm. much we can do, but one thing we can do is improve the conditions of ourselves as individuals and of the world as a whole spiritually. And in some small way, that's helping her. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's obviously very sobering thoughts, I think, in general, grave almost. It's sobering, yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> I think, you know, one interesting thing that I picked up here was that, you know, someone was talking about, um, you know, uh, almost giving the impression that the Mother Earth needs our healing and protection. I thought, well, is that quite true? Or is it more that, um, you know, <laughs> she could change this in a moment if she wanted to, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, her, it's her, you know, it's a... a tragic choice, but a choice that she's made for our sake at the moment. Mm. And it's not that she needs our healing protection. It's, mm. it's that um, she needs us to take the steps to change yeah. so that given the path that she's committed to, you know, she could, you know, we can help her to fulfill. Absolutely. And by the way, I want to say that question, it was a very sincere question yeah. and a heartfelt question and someone who really does care, Must obviously, be. about Must the be. Mother yeah. Earth. And that's a great thing in itself. Mm. The question is, what do we actually do about exactly. it? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's not much point. I mean, it, you're right. It is grave. We could wallow in it. We could... We could be sad about it, yeah. but that actually in the end isn't going to help her. The only thing is that if it spurs us into some form of action mm. and uh, there isn't, as you rightly say, I mean, w we can send healing yeah. and we could pray and we do and we can bless her. The energy itself actually goes into the ethers. Uh, it goes out to the divas yeah. around the earth. Um, it doesn't go directly to her. Indirectly, it's, it's obviously karmically a very good thing. Yeah. And indirectly, it's good because it's raising the vibrations. Mm. But there isn't very much, we, let's face it, that we can do directly for her other than improve our own behavior, improve the state of the world. And this should be the greatest and most overriding motive that anyone could have. And we can, we can show our reverence, our love, our appreciation. Mm. And we can, I mean, there really isn't a, a day of rest. Yeah. I mean, it's very telling, and it, this is in the Nine Freedoms, as yeah. a matter of fact, that Dr. King, who did enter cosmic consciousness um, and described it brilliantly, left it because of the Mother Earth. He, oh, yeah. That's the reason yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he left it, because mm. he couldn't feel content dwelling in the bliss of that state while knowing that the Mother Earth was suffering. Now, if some other yogis and masters had been as advanced as Dr. George King, they wouldn't have stayed so long in higher state. And I think they would readily say that now and admit that now. Uh, it, again, a, a revolutionary idea, because the old idea was you just stayed in that state forever, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody can really rest for too long Yes, enter the higher states. We need to. And if we do, we'll serve far better than we did before we entered them. Mm. So do enter them. Yeah, for sure. But to yeah. dwell in them, given the sacrifice of the Mother Earth, is 
I want to say criminal, but I'm going to say it just is wrong. Mm. Well, I think it, you know, it really causes us to reflect just in our own tiny way. Okay, we're not entering that state and then having that realization or and and seeing, you know, her sacrifice in that way. But you know, even for us, uh, uh, you know, in our everyday life, um, or people who sort of sit back and say, well, you know, I'm fine. Um, at the same moment, the Mother Earth is making this sacrifice that we can't even comprehend and providing us this environment in which we can live and it's only by her grace that we're here and to there's no way you could hold those two thoughts in your mind at the same time you couldn't at one at one moment recognize the sacrifice of my earth and also just be like well you know i don't need to do it you know i'm just enjoying my life you know, you know it's, it's an amazing yeah. thing I, I would go so far as to say that any spiritual tradition and there are some that don't include reverence for the Mother Earth mm. is lacking, mm. especially now. Mm. Um, it may be through ignorance. It may, I'm not saying it's deliberate. Yeah. Although there are reports of missionaries from certain religions who went out to peoples who did worship Earth, Mother Earth, by different names, and tried to talk them out of it in order to follow their religion instead. That was really wrong mm. if they did that. But on the whole, it's ignorance. But in the end, as we're told, there's no excuse for ignorance in the end, um, because people can find this great truth. I mean, right. it's been here for th hundreds, thousands of years. It was there, it was at the core of ancient Greece. I'm talking pre-Socrates and that mm. whole, you know, well-known period, the fifth century BC and so on. P before then, uh, Gaia, the Mother Earth was at the pinnacle of their, of their reverence, and, and rightly so, and that's where she should be. And every spiritual person on Earth, actually every person on Earth, but every spiritual person, part of their devotions, the main part, the most important part of what they do should be directed towards the, the, the welfare, the betterment, the help, the service, the devotion to Mother Earth. Mm. It, it, it also caused me to think about, um, you know, the context of this, you know, in terms of the new age and what the new age is really about, because, you know, a, a, yeah. a lot of the a lot of the, the sort of the narrative is about, you know, humanity, actually, and the new yeah. age being about us. But maybe we can take it back. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating because the new age has been predicted for centuries, I mean, the Mayans, the, some of the Indian astrologers, right. the Bible, yeah. many, you know, the ancient Greeks, from many, many sources, it was known mm -hmm. for hundreds and even thousands of years that this time would come and that before it, there would be a very dangerous and difficult time and a time of destruction, possibly a time of flooding, depending on which prophecies you look at, but right. it's fairly common themes. Yeah. What we probably now see as earthquakes, although they perhaps didn't describe them in that way then, uh, you know, and, and even fire and brimstone, which could be nuclear proliferation. A lot of these things were prophesied. Some said the end of the world even, mm. um, but some said after that will come this great new age. And so that's a pretty common theme. And it's happening. It's not wrong. What wasn't known, though, it seemingly, or certainly isn't stated by them, is why. What's the reason for this? Mm -hmm. And without that why, you'll never understand, because it does read very strangely. It's, it's some biblical text. It's almost like God lost, is going to lose patience. He'll put up with so much, and then that will be it. And, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be fire and brimstone, etc. Right, right. um, it's not that. It's all about the Mother Earth. It's because the Mother Earth is being limited, has been limited, and she shouldn't be limited. And although she's willing, it seems, to be limited, there will come a time when she will be asked by those even higher than herself. So we're going way beyond, even now, yeah. the dwellers of other planets or even suns to planetary existence as a living being, which a, a sun, or rather a planet, is when lords of the sun, from, ver from wherever, whichever sun, come together to form, to create a planet, to be a planet. Um, and, but even above that stage, it will be said, no, you've suffered enough. I mean, Jesus was allowed, we're told, to suffer so long on the cross mm. and no longer. Yeah, that's a great... And yeah, it's yeah. an example, mm. and it's not the only one. And um, likewise with the Mother Earth. You know, she, she in a, in even in a bigger way, will be told no. And so that's why this 
time of change and this time of sorting, which is also mentioned in various traditions, where some will go through into the new age and some won't, it's because those who won't go through into it won't be able to live here because the vibrations will change and the energy will change and people who don't change with it, because that's what they do on other planets, they tune in and conform and put at the forefront of their concerns the needs or, if you like, the radiations, the vibrations, the essence of their planet. Mm. And it's their job to tune in and fit in, if that's the right phrase, with that rather than the other way round. Yeah. On here, we've got the Mother Earth accommodating us, yes. limiting yeah. herself for yeah. us. Yeah. That's going to change. It'll come so those ancient prophets and seers didn't know that reason, or mm. they don't seem to have known it, but that's the missing link in all those prophecies. And then they suddenly make sense. Ah, okay, so the earth is going to change. So people won't be able to live here unless they change. Actually, they won't be sort of finished. They won't, as some prophecies said, be sort of confined to hell or just sort of disappear. Those souls will go to another planet which will have to, sadly, tragically, for that mm. planet, mm. put up with whoever they are. Yeah, I'm not saying way, who yeah. it's going to be or not yeah. be. Uh, but the Mother Earth will eventually change, and that's the new age. And it's up to us to fit into that, not the other way around. So what actually happened on July the 8th during, during this primary initiation, and what has happened since then, you know, as, as we've kind of moving into this new era? On July the 8th, the Mother Earth was initiated by high beings, and that's um, the subject of the devotions of the Ethereum Society today, all day, mm. all over the world. And members of the society uh, all gather together in various locations and focus on exactly what happened that day. And that's revealed in a particular book, which is available to those members. And anybody can apply to become a member, by the way. It's not a secret society. It's mm. quite open if people want to. And then they'll get the full revelations about the details of how that was conducted. And even at a, at a certain stage hear the details as it was delivered. Mm. Um, but essentially what happened is she was given great cosmic energies. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we, we couldn't take those. That would be the change I've mentioned. Most people wouldn't be able to sustain it or live here. Mm -hmm. I don't even know whether you or I would, Darren. I've got no idea. Mm. Um, you know, I say even. I mean, maybe especially. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm not judging anyone when I say that. I'm not in a position to. I'm just saying that that's being held back. But it won't always be so. So it's an urgent requirement on us all to change for two reasons. Mm. One, so that we are in a position to go into the new age, yeah. but much more importantly than that, to speed up this change so that it can be made sooner rather than later so that it will enable the Mother Earth to move on. Not that she couldn't do it right. today. She right. could, but she seemingly won't. But if humanity changed a lot for the better, it would certainly make that decision, that moment, come sooner, I would say. And that's the best reason we could possibly speed up our spiritual evolution and help others to do the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, it's a point about urgency, isn't it? Because mm. it's, um, we often don't think about spiritual things in an urgent way, you yeah. know, just like you know, something I'll do kind of on the side or it's mm. a nice part of my life or whatever. But actually, this is, this is the absolute core of, of what we're talking, you know, when we're talking about spirituality, this is really one thing that's at the heart of it. This is it? the heart of it. This yeah. is, I mean, today the Spiritual Freedom Show mm. is calling for spiritual freedom for the Mother Earth. Right, yeah. That's the freedom that's required yeah. here. Yeah. She's limited by us. And we are really calling out to ourselves and everybody else to engage in changing, to bring about the spiritual freedom of the Mother Earth. Right, and this is, uh, as I say, I just have to emphasize your point again about urgency because I think it completely yeah. changes the way that we think about yeah, it. because she's suffering now, yes. every second. Yes. She's suffering, she's holding herself back. There is no time to waste or dither or think, oh, yeah, I'll try and catch that in the next life, which you won't, mm. by the way. Mm. I'm sorry to say. Well, certainly not easily mm. anyway. It'd be much easier to do it now, karmically speaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's, that's another great theme in, 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 you know, in terms of the procrastination that we often find ourselves in is that, 
you know, there's another day to do it or there's another life to do it even. But, you know, what did it take for us to get into the position where we even had access to this wisdom, where we were in a position even physically to be able to do something about it, where, you know, to be near, to be, to, to know about um, things that could help to raise the consciousness of humanity, to be able to do it ourselves. I mean, yeah, the position we're in would be one that would be very, very tragic to squander, I think. Very tragic to squander, and we don't have to squander it, right. and that's the good news. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been given an extension, as it were, because the sorting could have happened by now, mm. and spiritual action is also giving more people a chance to change, mm -hmm. but it's not changing them. We can only change ourselves. That's the key to it, and we know how to do it. Uh, we talk about that every week on this show. Mm. But today, let's just focus on Mother Earth and the reason, the best reason, the only really, really great reason that we can do this that matters in the cosmic scheme of things, shall we say. Yes, it's great to serve humanity. That's a wonderful thing to do. But to serve the Mother Earth, that's even greater. Good evening. Thank you, Richard. Everybody's down here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Richard and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, and your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.